Hello, my name is Dr. Sebastian Unisoni. I am the co-director of the Vasculitis and Glomerulonephritis Center in MGH here in Boston. Today we will be talking about giant cell arthritis, or GCA. So what is GCA? GCA is a disease of unknown cause that causes inflammation in the largest arteries of the body. Examples of those arteries are the aorta, which is the largest artery that goes through the chest and the abdomen, and branches of the aorta. Classically, the disease tends to cause inflammation in the extracranial branches of the head and neck arteries. What, where's the disease? What's the name coming from? So the name is coming from some specific cells that are seen when one examines the, the biopsies of these arteries under the microscope, and you can see that within these inflammatory infiltrates or inflammatory cells, some cells are very big, and that's why they are called giant cells, and therefore the name of giant cell arteritis. Other names for this disease are temporal arteritis or Horton's disease. So who gets GCA? GCA is a disease of the elderly. Patients are by definition more than 50 years. Usually they are in the 70s, 75 years of age. It's a disease that greatly affect, affects Caucasians or white uh, persons more than any other race. Women are two to three more times uh, involved or affected than men. How GCA presents? Well, GCA can cause a variety of symptoms. Uh, they, might, they might overlap with each other. Patients may present with new type of headaches, headaches that classically are in the temporal area, but can involve any other areas of the head. The important thing is that these headaches are new. The patient doesn't have these headaches before. The patient may have migraines of other types of headaches, but now something different is going on. Some patients may report pain when they chew, pain in the area of the jaw. We call that jaw claudication. Patients can have um, tenderness in the scalp. Sometimes when they are wearing glasses or when they are combing their hair, they can notice discomfort in the scalp. It's common to see pain and stiffness in the shoulder area, in the hip area. We call that PMR or polymyalgia rheumatica. And some patients, a minority of patients, may have uh, visual symptoms. Those visual symptoms could be transient or episodic blood revision, uh, double vision, Sometimes there is episodic vision loss, and unfortunately, a minority, maybe one or two out of um, 10, will have blindness. That's why it's very important to seek attention when a patient is having these symptoms to prevent that poor outcome of blindness. How do we diagnose GCA? Well, luckily today we have several tools we can use to make a diagnosis. Some of these tools are less specific, for example, the majority of the patients will have increased markers of inflammation in the blood, something called erythrocyte sedimentation rate, or ESR, or C-reactive protein, or CRP. As, as I said before, most of the patients will have these markers elevated. The problem is that these markers don't tell us exactly what it is. Infection, other rheumatologic diseases can cause elevation of these markers. But then we have other more specific tools. We can do imaging of the arteries with an ultrasound, for example, or with a CT, or with an MRI, or with a technique called PET that will show us inflammation in the arteries. And then you can also, or patients can also have a biopsy of those arteries. Classically, the site to, to go and sample to make the diagnosis is the temporal artery that is located right here where I'm showing you. How do we treat GCA? So, first of all, whenever a doctor suspects GCA, we call that a rheumatologic emergency, so we need to start treatment immediately, even before we confirm the disease with these imaging or biopsy. Uh, why? To prevent blindness. Again, blindness is rare, it's only a minority of patients, but we can prevent it. So, the first thing I have to say about treatment is, upon the disease is suspected, treatment must be initiated immediately. So how do we treat? The first step of treatment is, is steroids or glucocorticoids or corticosteroids. An example is prednisone. These patients usually require a large dose at the beginning to treat the inflammation quickly. And that large dose that is kept for a few weeks is subsequently tapered slowly over a few months um, to hopefully wean off 
the, the prednisone. Because GCA tends to relapse once we taper the prednisone, uh, we often use medications to prevent those relapses. We call that remission maintenance. The medication that is most frequently used nowadays is called tocilizumab. Um, has been shown in clinical trials to be effective at keeping the disease in remission and sparing the use of this prednisone in most of the patients, not in all, but in most of the patients. Other medications that we can sometimes use to keep the disease in remission include a medication called metrotrexate. Unfortunately, nowadays, there are several clinical trials ongoing with other medications, uh, so there's hope that in the next few years we'll have more options in our toolbox to treat GCA. So I hope this information has been beneficial. If you have uh, further questions or you are curious and you want to have more information, here I'm leaving you some resources from the American College of Rheumatology. Thank you.